In this video, I want to talk about the HDMI connection for your GH6 or GH5 Mark II. Some online review has shown that the lag on the GH6 can be really bad. In this video, we're going to have a look at how bad it really is and how you can mitigate this problem. Here I have my GH6 connected to my field monitor. Before we go deeper into this topic, let's talk about some basic concepts. The camera has an LCD screen, typically low resolution, and a viewfinder and these are already not giving you a real live view of what's happening in front of the lens and this is because the camera needs to process information from the sensor in order to form an image for you to see. Generally speaking on the GH series the LCD back screen is already one frame behind reality. As frame rate drops the refresh of the LCD drops as well and therefore the apparent lag from reality is increasing and this is quite noticeable so even if, when you film at a 24p for example like I've done underwater I could clearly see the fish moving ahead what I was seeing on the screen of the camera. A couple of other concepts to take into account majority of monitors do not have a lot of latency they're actually quite fast and the latency itself does not depend on the length of the cable and as long as the cable is compliant with the specification, not even from the quality of the cable itself. Another important part is that the HDMI connection has together audio and video. And these two information need to be in sync so that if you're then connecting a recorder, this is recording correctly without a lip sync uh, issue. And the other point to be taken into account is that resolution plays a role in the old delay but not a major role as you may think. When you look on the screen and on the camera LCD you can see clearly that there is a delay. However, if you go in the HDMI recording option and you disable the sound you can see that this delay is significantly reduced and it's actually quite acceptable. What seems to be happen in the GH series is that the audio recording is actually delaying the video. So no matter how fast is the image processing line pipeline and the processor the Panasonic has put into the camera, seems like it's the audio that is holding the whole system back. Using another device at 240 frames per second, I recorded the camera LCD and the external monitor recorder with audio on and off for both the GH6 and the GH5 Mark II for the frame rates of 24, 30 and 60 frames per second. What I found is that the GH6 has improved on the GH5 Mark II on all frame rates except 30 frames per second. This looks very strange because as you can see from this chart the lag at 30 frames per second is actually more than what the camera provides at 24 frames per second indicating some kind of bug. Let's have a look at how do I set my uh, GH6 for monitoring. You see that I'm using the specific display on the LCD where I have all the various shooting parameters that I can quickly change as I wish. Going into the HDMI recording output menu, I typically set info display to off because my monitor has already got a lot of information and grids and other, and other tools to shoot. The other things that I do is to down convert the output to 180p. This is because majority of monitors only support HDMI 1.4 180p input and therefore if you put them in 4K they'll start switching when you then connect it in the different modes. I will give you an example later. The other thing that I do is obviously put sound output off so that I have the least possible lag in whatever mode I'm shooting. There's also another option for a large live display that I also set to off uh, because my monitor has got the ability to zoom directly two times, four times into uh, the various parts to control the focus and therefore I don't use it. However, if your monitor does not have this feature, it's worth looking at the two options. The first one is useful if you have a recorder which basically is giving you the magnification but then when you start recording 
it gets off the box and the other one instead is giving you always the magnification box but drop the output. As I said, I, I'm setting these two off. The final step that I do is to go into the camera setup in playback and change the output resolution in the HDMI setting from auto to 180p which is the same resolution that I'm using when I'm monitoring. This means that when I then switch between monitoring and playback, I don't have any delay. Instead, if I set up this to auto, every time the camera switches between monitoring and playback, there will be a little delay whilst the monitor is negotiating with the camera the highest supported resolution. If you're using an external recorder, the options are obviously different. You set your info display to off to have a clean HDMI output, then convert to off to avoid that accidentally you don't convert your footage. HDMI recording control is set to on. On compatible recorders, this means that you can start recording from the camera. Sound output will be on if you're recording the audio with the camera. You can put this off, but you need to take into account that there will be a sync issue if you're using your recorder to record the audio. And finally, you need to choose if you want to use the enlarged live display. If your monitor has already got adequate tool, you don't need to. But the GHC gives you the possibility to enlarge the display just before recording, so that you can still use this facility in case your monitor and recording tool are not really great. Um, just before you set your critical shot. You don't need to worry about the output settings because you will typically be playing back directly on the recorder. In conclusion, if you use an external monitor with your gh 5 r 2 or GH6, using the settings that are provided you in this video, you can have a pretty good experience on the field. The delays are in the order of 50 milliseconds to 150 milliseconds from lifetime and this is totally acceptable in any kind of situation that you may be working in. However, if instead you use an external recorder, the situation changes. What I found also strange is that whilst on the GH5 Mark II, as you were increasing the frame rate, the, the lag was going down and only the 24p mode was really quite sluggish. On the GH6, it looks like Panasonic has fixed the lag on the 24p mode, but then when you switch to 30p, a higher lag comes back, which is something that I really cannot understand, that can only be due to a software bug. I hope someone from Panasonic is listening to this. It's a wonderful camera, both the GH5 Mark II, but especially the GH6 are fantastic cameras, and I think that these issues that we have discussed in this video can easily be resolved in the next firmware update. Thank you for watching.